Okay, so boom, this is a story about a cub named Stroke. And the reason they call him Stroke is because he had a stroke. And then all of a sudden, dramatic effect, me, please. This is how he had to talk. Like his mouth was kind of to the side like this. And when I tell you, this man was about 6'6", six, six, almost 300 pounds. This man was a monster. But see, he was one of them dudes in the penitentiary where he was so big it automatically brought a sense of uh, fear over you, you know what I'm saying? And he worked out all the time. It took me at the real penitentiary physique. I'm talking about penitentiary rules in effect. And he was one of them rah-rah dudes, you know what I'm saying? He liked to play around, grab you, you know what I'm saying? Let you feel his strength. That way you know what's going on. Well, he was one of the dudes, you know what I'm saying, that when you first get to the penitentiary, you hear a lot of stories about. When I first got there, I heard a lot about this old head. He was, he was real skinny. I think I done talked about him before. I don't know if he had caught that pack. You don't know what the pack is. That let me know you ain't been to the penitentiary. If you ain't been to the penitentiary, listen, I've asked you never go to the penitentiary. But when he got there, like he had like two, three murder cases. You know what I'm saying? And they say he was real hard on young dudes when they first came in the penitentiary. He was one of them dudes that'll leave a snack on your pillow. When you first get there, you come in there and eat the snack. He tell you he want the snack back. You suddenly reach for the for the food and be like, oh, here you go. He said, no, I don't want it that way. I want to get it out the way it's supposed to come out. You know what I'm saying? He was one of them, what they call the booty bandit. You know what I'm saying? And now in the pandemic, he still worked, had a job. You know what I'm saying? But every time you see him, he was always one of them. That's dude right there, you know, dude. Dude, back in the day, man, they said dude went hard. What do you, what, what, what's up with him? What do you used to do? Man, they talking about, man, the man used to do what? But at the same time, it was weird because he had a whole lot of respect in the picture. Like, it was a bunch of them, you know what I'm saying? Big C was one of them. Y'all probably don't hear me talk about Big C and Stroke, you know what I'm saying, was one of them too. He was at the bottom of the hill when I first got there. So by the time he get moved to the top of the hill, he across the hallway. But if you across the hallway, a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, you got some homeboys over on our side, you know what I'm saying, he used to come over there every now and then, and all of a sudden, I come out of the cell one day, and I'm chilling on the rock. This around the time, you know what I'm saying, I, I had a little stove running and everything. So I'm out chilling on the rock, and I see Stroke come across the hallway, and when he walk in, he ran, what's going on, what's cracking, cool? And when I see him, I'm looking like, I'm like, man, who the dude right there? Because he come over, you know what I'm saying? It's a woman guard in there, too. Now, I'm guessing he being loud, and he got his shirt off. He got his penitentiary grades on. He got the real snug jumps on, too. You know what I'm saying? He know what he in here doing. So when I see him, he ran, what crack, cub? What y'all got going on over here, cub? So I'm looking. I'm like, man, who is this fella right here? I already don't like him. I don't like his vibe. I don't like how he moving. And I can already tell he probably one of them dudes. You know what I'm saying? He a little bully on the low, too. So one of the guys pulled up on me. I said, man, who the dude right there? He said, man, that's, that's Stroke right there. I was like, Stroke? What they call him Stroke for? He was like, man, he down there at the bottom of the hill. You know what I'm saying? He was down there working out. You know what I'm saying? They kept telling me he need to drink some water and this, this, and that. You know, we ain't eating nothing but them soups in here. They don't feed us nothing healthy. You know what I'm saying? He down there working out in that sun. Talking about he got it, man. Down there on the bench press. Said he got up off the bench press and just started. Said he fell down, you know what I'm saying, had a stroke, they rushed him to the outside hospital or whatever. And they just did, you know what I'm saying, he's been, he been talking like it. And he was like, man, don't fool with dude, you know what I'm saying, dude ain't straight. He was like, man, cuz them really be using him as a send out, you know what I'm saying? When somebody got to move or something, you know what I'm saying? They let him go in there, bump down on him, you know what I'm saying, bully him, and then kind of force their way in the move, in the move. I said, are oh, they doing it like that? He was like, yeah, yeah. He was like, man, couldn't him be one of the homeboys down on the bottom of the hill so wrong. This was the main story everybody talked about when it came to him. But commercial break me, please. You recording this? Yeah. Oh, you know how you be scrolling TikTok, right? <laughs> yeah. Man, that nigga, I saw the, I think the first shit I saw when you had the green screen, the newspaper on. I had to go up. I said, hold up, this shit too good. I had to go all the way to the bottom and start up. Yeah. <laughs> it's about four o'clock in the morning. Just piecing, the morning. I was just piecing a little story together. Yeah. Then I went to YouTube and had to go listen to all the jail stories. Yeah. I'm telling you, I know, all, I, I know every story. That's real, man. that's, that's real, real, that's real. Don't make the same mistake you did. You know what I'm saying? Previously on Traps. Mr. Diddy, we already went over that. 
from the job. Man, them young niggas don't got the money. I got the money. You don't gotta worry about me with no murder. Look, boom. Niggas get bodied out here, niggas. Niggas, bitches getting fucked on. What is it? Big red or blue? Man, you know it's big blue, man. What are you talking about, too? Lil J messed my money up. You know Cherry? Cherry. <laughs> I know Cherry. There's traps right there. If you ain't already on Patreon, I need you to go over to Patreon and watch Trap. We drop an episode four this weekend. I know everybody asking about the uh, 85. I ain't even gonna finish it right there. You gonna have to go over to Patreon. But I do want to address this one more time because it was a lady who said she was disappointed in traps. Traps is no different than what I've been doing the entire time on my platform. Nobody would have started watching me had I not started out telling them the stories that the way that I was telling them. One thing I know about being a disciple, when Yeshua came to the disciples when they was out fishing, he said, drop your poles. He said, I'm going to make you a fisherman of men. Everybody in ministry does not look the same. The reason I've been effective the way I've been effective is because I relate to the people who have lived a similar type of lifestyle. I speak a type of a certain type of lingo. I move a certain type of way. And when I speak, they understand where I'm coming from, which makes them want to hear what it is that I have to say because we relate. Had I dropped some videos and just been coming out pure deep positive, gave a bunch of listen to me, people would not even go over there to listen to see what I have to say. When I dropped the escape story, I didn't start off and say, you know, this is my life. I told the story where it would captivate the attention and grab you over here and then I can give you the message. Traps is no different. You just ain't gave me time to get there. If I can get you to come over and see what's going on, eventually I can tie in the message. I didn't call it traps for nothing. But if you ain't already over, I need you to go over there and check out traps. Okay, so boom, 424. The link is in the description. And if you can't find the description, just jump in the comment section and say, Joe T, where is the, where is the link? And I'm going to tell you something else, uh, 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 YouTube family. I'm a little disappointed. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I had to drop some of the snippet of the 85 South show in in the last video in order to get some of y'all over it. See, that, that's what makes content creators at times. Because y'all say, uh, y'all get paid for your content. They paying y'all through ads and this, this, and that, and this, and that. But it's so sad to me because it take for... It take drastic things to happen. Like if I got pulled over and I did something and, and I ended up going to jail and a GoFundMe popped off, everybody would be willing to send me $10, $15, $20 on my books while I'm locked up. Everybody would be asking, man, what happened to Joe T? Making videos. It take for something that serious to happen to see the support come monetarily. Bill Feezy, for instance. You know what I mean? People would hit me up and say, man, ask Bill Fe what he need on his books. And boom, 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 boom. Being out, though, the, when we trying to do certain things, we say, man, same thing with Jay Williams. Jay Williams ended up in jail. I guarantee he's had hundreds, probably thousands of people saying, how can we put money on his books? When we free and saying, man, this is what we're trying to do. I'm trying to build. You won't even go. I'm free. I'm fr I'm free. I'm trying to do something. I'm saying it costs five dollars. Come over here to Patreon. If I go to jail tomorrow, everybody who wouldn't send me five dollars or send me twenty to jail, tell me where that makes sense at. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Now I'm gonna get back to the story. Now look, check this out. So the one of the main stories that floated around about stroke was one of the homeboys had a move, 
he really wasn't fooling with the homeboy. Penitentiary rules in effect. I done told y'all before. The people of their own kind, they don't fool with their own kind because they own kind be the ones that cross them out. It ain't no different than when you out here on the streets. It's amazing and crazy to me how you can go out and get way more love and support and loyalty and respect from people that ain't your bloodline. And it's the same way within gangs, organizations, whatever you want to call them. You have to fool with people outside of your circle in order to even build something. Just like what we've built over here on Patreon. These ain't my family, but they my family. And that's exactly how it is in the penitentiary. So one of the homeboys, he fooling with everybody. He actually fooling with the guys more than he fooled with anybody else. So of course, the Crips get wind of that. And they always, man, cuz ain't fooling with the homeboys and this, this and that. So what they done done is they done sent this bully stroke. They send this man in here to bump down on him. They get stroke, stroke. They say stroke goes in here, chokes the man out puts him to sleep. This is what they do in the penitentiary. This is a true story. So what they done did, they done made the homeboy bump down on Cud, choke him out till he pass out and go to sleep. Then they force the boy to come in the cell, give him oral while he knocked out. After that happened, they get they lay him down in the bed, make the boy get in the bed with him, and they take pictures of him laying up with the boy. The boy thinking he got to do it in order to stay on the compound, not knowing. They busting this move. This penitentiary rules is, penitentiary rules is in effect. We need you to do what we need to do. And then you're going to have to get on from around here. So the boy, after they get the boy to do all that, they tell him he got to go to the bottom of the hill. When he get down there to the bottom of the hill, the homeboy down there telling him he got to pay to stay on, on the bottom of the hill, knowing he can't come back to the top of the hill. So the boy ends up in PC. He have a choice. Cubs get up, they wait two, three days later. The big homie go in the cell. Hey, cool. Look, check this out, cool. This what's going on, cool. All the homeboys know what you got going on with that boy. And at that point, of course, man, what you got going on, cool? Right, look, check this out, cool. He showed him the pictures of him in the, he was like, now this is how you, he like, man, what type of game you got going on, cool? This, this and that. They go back and forth, and he tell him at this point, you ain't got no choice. Because all the homeboys, we're going to bust the move. We're going to say, this is what you got going on, right? And at that point, guess what? The boy, is in the, the boy is in the hole, so it ain't nobody he can go to and be like, man, look what's going on, this is that. Because the homeboys won't in on this move. Now, the penitentiary is a very dangerous place because people will go to that extent just to get what it is that they want. You never know the extent a person will go to when they desperate. That's why I do not like hanging with desperate people. I end up in the penitentiary, not because of the life that I was living that would eventually lead me to the penitentiary, but because I was around a desperate person. And when you're around desperate people, one thing they not considering is the people that's around them. Because of the situation my char partner had going on, he was already facing attempted murder he's not caring who he's gonna put at stake in order to get something that he wants and that's how the fire shot fired off when we wake up in the morning and realize that this man bled out and died because this this man was he was that desperate being desperate enough in the penitentiary because somebody got to move, he probably got to move in the VG or he probably got a police officer. And just because he ain't fooling with you, you will go to that extent to violate a man and then expect like ain't nothing going to go left. Now, the two or three homeboys that decided to do this together, of course, eventually somebody's going to get cut out. Because it's not going to be enough to continue to go around for everybody, which it happens when you go look at traps. Trap is traps is the prime example of how you think something gonna go the way you wanted to go when you ain't living the way you supposed to live, and then all of a sudden, dramatic effect me, please. So in this situation right here, one of the homeboys end up getting cut out of the situation. So what he do is he go around and he start telling people that the homeboy had something going on with the boy. Now it's done start circling around, it's done start getting out within the institution. Now it's becoming now that they done got in the mood, they trying to treat it like it's just a laughing matter until one of the pictures came out. And then guess what happened? The video came out. So when the video come out, of course he ain't gonna try to go bump down on the big dude who put knocked him out and 
put him to sleep, he go after the homeboy who started the toxicness and the messiness because of, you know what I'm saying, he got cut out of the picture. He sticks on this dude. They lifelight him. Cuz end up on massive security. Of course, the board are not ready. The, the board are not ready got, got sent to the back. And now, guess what? Ain't nobody got nothing. And that's how it go in the life every single time. I don't care how long you getting away with it. Let me tell you something about the trick of the enemy. Commercial break me, please. The, the, the enemy will take you up on a high mountain just like he offered Yeshua when you go and read Matthew. I think it's chapter 3. He, he set him up on a high mountain. He said, I'll give you all the paradises of this world. And a lot of times you get away with something for so long you think you done slip through the cracks. And then when everything start crumbling down it happens so fast it spirals out of control so fast and then you sitting back and you think man man i should have man why didn't they man man because guess what is he gonna do he gonna put a bunch of yes men and desperate people around you who really only using you because they notice that you getting what it is they have something that you want and they getting it from you it's like leeches they suck the blood out of you till it ain't no more to suck and then when they realize then when they realize, oh, you out of blood, they gonna go on to the next vessel that they can suck on, and you gonna be sitting up in, and you gonna be laid up in the graveyard, not knowing why you even there. And you gonna end up in the penitentiary, and you gonna realize that them folks ain't never had you back, folks ain't never had your best interest, folks ain't never cared about you, and everybody who told you they love you, they didn't even know what the real definition of love is. And that's what happened in this situation. Now, I had, it was two situations that I, I walked in, in in the cell one time with uh with uh cuz with cuz stroke. So I come out of the cell right pow, walk my little bow leg down. I'm finna go down and holler at one, one of the guys, and usually that's what they be having, that's what they be having dice games in. It's a corner cell, you know what I'm saying? It's bigger. The cells is in the back versus up against the wall is when you come in. So when I tap on the pop, 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 I hear somebody, bet 10 or 4, bet, 20, bet 10 or 4, bet, bet two suits on 10 or 4. I said, man, what's up, man? It's Joe T. Let me hold it. Man, come on in. Come on in, Joe T. I stepped in. I, man, bless his ear. Hold on, hold on real quick, bro. Hold on. Bet, bet two suits, bet two suits on 10 or 4, 10 or 4. And he shake the And he betting, the dude, that, the, the dude who shaking the knife, he betting against stroke. He hit stroke. Stroke goes, he reached down to grab the money from the pot and the side bet. Stroke reached down and say, man, hold on, homeboy, hold on, homeboy. Joe T walked in the cell, I don't know what you did. He said, man, come on, cuz, get up off me, cuz he raised up. At that point, Stroke grabs the man. I'm talking about, about push him on the side of the wall. This dude, you can see, he got it, he got his laundry bag in the cell with him while he's shooting like clearly he been in here hitting me for. I just walk in in the middle of this. Funny folk gets up off the ground and say, man, hold, hold on, stroke, hold on, stroke. Stroke turn, and he got dude with one arm. He got funny folk like this here. He, man, hold on, hold on, g -body. Hold on, g -body. You ain't got nothing to do with this, g -body. He was like, man, I don't know what you did with them dice. He was like, man, come on, man. You're going to have to shoot them old, man. That's your way, man. That's my lad, man. Funny folk like, man, he hit the team, man. He hit that. He hit, man, hey, hey, g -body. hey. And he let him go. And he turned around toward, towards funny folk. So at this point, I'm in a situation because now this, this G, listen, G, that, that dude ain't even the business. You done stepped in this man's business and now I got to get in the business because you the business. I said, man, what's going on? So, man, I don't know what he did with them dice, man. I looked up when he told you to come and say it. Next thing you know, he talk, I, I just sit there and seen him hit the man fair and square. But this is true. Cuz how dude, dude, he done roughed up. He said, man, you know what? You ain't even got to worry about it. So he was like, that's you. That shoot, he was like, man, I'm do. He was like, nah, 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 just shoot the dice hole. Just shoot the dice hole. He said, man, I'm going to go and get up out of here, man. I'm going to go and hit and then stroke out. Oh, no, nah, cuz. Cuz, cuz, oh, no, nah, homeboy. You ain't finna run out of here with anybody's stuff, man. You got the game messed up, man. You ain't finna come in here and just run out with anybody's stuff. Anybody still got some money in here. We still got them until anything. Oh, the home. He said, man, I'm finna get up out of here. Stroke, grab the man bag. He grabbed the man bag. When he grabbed it, the, some of the food come out. Stroke go down and start picking him in. He was like, nah, you tripping, man. Right? You think you're going to come in here and read in the lights, right? And just walk up out of That's what he used to do right there. We walk out of this. <laughs> look, look, look. Me and Fudderford walk out of the cell. I'm looking at him. He looking at me. We looking at him. I said, man, what you got going on? 
He said, man, that wasn't even straight, man. What he tried to do with bro and that, man? You, I said, man, don't ever do nothing like that when I come around. Put me in no situation where I'm finna have to ride with you. Dude, what a problem with both of us in now. He said, man, man, I don't care nothing about that, man. Dude, like he Debo, man. He was like, man, that ain't straight. I'm just letting him know. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping if a situation ain't ha happen like that with me, somebody stand up and tell him, man, he wrong. He was like, man. I said, well, next time you decide to do that, just make sure I ain't around because I ain't, you know what I'm saying? He said, man, you crazy. He said, bro, you know you. I said, I wouldn't have had no choice because they would have sent me to the back. I said, but next time, do not get in somebody's business that ain't your business, G. I said, that ain't going to happen like that. Next time, I'm going to grab you and say, that ain't got nothing to do with GD. We finna get up out of here. He said, man, quick, man. I said, man, I'm dead serious, man. But anyway, that was one situation I seen with Stroke. The other situation was we on the basketball court. Now, the, now the dude can hoop. Now, the dude, the dude can hoop. He would be you kind of slow. But he had one of them, he had one of them lean back jumpers. You really couldn't guard him, right? So they out here. He guarding his he guarding his little dude, uh, Dante. What they call him. Dante? I hear hit. Dante go to the rack. Stroke try to jump over him. He he come from behind. Him. He think he's LeBron. He think he's gonna put it on the backboard. He jump from behind. Him, but when DJ finna go up, he fake it. So Stroke goes over the top of him, and when he he go over his body, so he falls on the ground. Then. D take go up and he get, yeah, yeah, get on up off the ground. When he get up off the ground, he turn around to walk off. D take, he stroke grab the ball. He's like, oh, you got me there. And he drills the ball towards D take. And then miss D take. And it hit one of the homeboys on a different hood that was standing off to the side over. So the homeboy turned around, he like, oh, cuz, what you got going on, cuz? He was like, man, whatever you want to go on, cuz, what's up, cuz? You know I was trying to hit you. Well, what you trying to do, cuz, what's up? So at that point, all the homeboys, they come over, they were like, nah, cuz, you tripping, man, that's poor sportsmanship. And stroke bus had to say, what y'all want to do? Y'all want to put me in the rack? Go on, put me in the rack. Go on, send three or four of you in there. Come on in the rack with me. He basically letting them know, I'm going to be three or four of you up in the rack anyway. They were like, no, nah, cuz, you just need to chill, cuz, cuz, you can't be acting like that, man, cuz dude DJ, like, he said, man, it's whatever, man. It's, so he just, he was just one of them dudes. So the man come to me one day, the man come to me. At this point, I'm running the store, he already owed me a couple of dollars. I can't remember what the spread was, what he, what he can, but I know he owed me, he owed me $15. This is, this is probably one of the few times Black James Ended up taking up with it. Well, check this out. Check this out. So when he come to get what he, he still owe me $15. Next week comes around where he's got to pay me that money. He also owe Black James. Black James go down here to collect. Him and Black James having a conversation. And he tells Black James that he got whatever he got from me first. So he going to pay me first. And whatever he got left, he going to pay, pay Black James. Black Jane tell him, no, nah, you need to go on, because I'm right here. So he tells Black Jane, well, I'm going to have to get over on you, little brother. And when he tell him that, Black Jane say, I want to see what he, because he, because he an instigator, he think anything fun in the game. He tell him, I, I want to see if he'll go for it. I want to see if he'll go for it. He was like, so what you saying? He, Black Jane basically tell him to go up here and, and buck me and tell me he ain't finna, to see what I'm going to do. Same way, cuz them be doing, they homeboys. So he was like, all right, all right, all right. So I don't know if he paid Black Jane right. I'm not knowing what's going on. Stroke comes up to my cell. Pop, 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 pop. I said, man, what's up? I said, man, bro, T, I need to holler at your stroke. It's cause stroke. I said, man, come on in real quick. He popped up. Man, bless your cell, bro, T, what you got going on? I said, I ain't doing nothing chilling. I said, man, I ain't doing nothing chilling. You know what I'm saying? Just uh, rounding up everything. You know what I'm saying? From the store. I'm sitting here. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back there. He was like, man, I ain't going to be able to give you that. He was like, man, that's your whistle right now. I turned around and said, dude, what? He said, man, yeah, 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 that's over with right now. He was like, I'm going to have to get to you when I'm going to get to you. I said, no, nah, that ain't how it's going to work for me, homie. I said, that's over with. I said, man, what you got going on? Man, I'm just saying, bro, T, I don't already see what I done said. I said, man, now nah, you're going to pay me today. I ain't, I ain't doing none of that. I said, we're going to have to see about that. He was like, man, nah, I done see what I done see, bro, T. I ain't got no. And at that point, Black Jane knocks on the door. He hear what's going on. Black Jane knocks on the door and walks in. He, man, bless his cell. What's going on? I said, man, ain't nothing going on. I said, step out the cell 
saying real quick. I said, man, me and Cuz talking about something right now. He said, nah, we ain't got nothing to talk about. I already done saying what I, I said, man, Blake, I ain't step out of the say it real quick. He was like, man, what's going on, G? I said, this my personal business. It ain't got nothing to go. It ain't got nothing. It ain't got nothing to do with G. He said, man, watch out. He said, excuse me, Blake, I ain't on my body. He said, man, you can chalk that. I said, man, I ain't finna chalk nothing, homie. At that time, he turned back around because of how aggressive I'm being. He turned back around. He said, so what you said, little homie? He closed the door. I'm guess I'm still not knowing what's going on. Black Jane hollering, man, he owe you some money, Joe T. I said, yeah, he owe me $15. He talking about his old man, ain't nothing. He was like, oh man, what you got going on, cuz? He said, man, Black Jane, you already know what time it is. He was like, man, you already know it. Black Jane was like, oh, you gonna have to go on and pay my little brother. He was like, oh, so that's what we doing, Black Jane? At that point, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. He was like, man, you gonna have to pay my little brother. He hollered, man, I ain't finna pay none one of you suckers. I said, who? Black Jane said, hold on, so see, I got it. He said, now, he said, now, I was playing now. He said, man, now, yeah, he said, who? He said, hold on, who you disrespect? He was like, man, I'm just saying, you come down here and holler at me, talking about, go up there and see if I can get over on your little bro. I said, hold on, Black Jane, what's going on? He said, man, Joe T, I sent him up here on a joke. I said, but nah, he said, nah, now you done got disrespect. He was like, man, I don't know what's going on. He was like, man, what's up with you, Stroke? At that point, Stroke reaches out and pushes Black Jane. Stroke standing right by the door, but the door is secure. He pushed Black Jane. Black Jane grabbed his arm and pushed, and he leans back towards the door. He goes to swing at Black Jane. In my cell. Listen, I got a corner cell, so it's big. He swings at Black James. I'm looking like, man, we got to jump him in here. <laughs> we ain't got no trouble to jump. He owe both of us the money. He ain't paid us. I just hear what's going on. He done called us some suckers up here. Are we in the right to go ahead and do what we gonna do? The man missed Black Jane. Black Jane hit him with an elbow. When Jack, when Black Jane hit him with the elbow, he bumps into me. I pushed him. I push him, Black Jane hit him, and picked him back up, and was like, man, come on up out of the cell. He was like, man, we're going to get up out of here. I'm thinking to myself, you, you, you most certainly right. You need to get up out of here. So when he, he do, he do Black Jane, he was like, nah, you got, he, nah, you got, you messed up, Black Jane. You don't want to put me in this situation. You going to, that, that what we on? That, but he ain't swinging at Black Jane. Did, did, I said, oh, I said, oh, he really big for nothing. I said, he said, oh, so y'all gonna jump me? Y'all, I said, oh, oh, now, now, now he looking for a read to run down here and tell the homeboy a bunch of nonsense that didn't he? He said, Joe T, you gonna put your hands on me too? He was like, what's, I said, oh, he prepared. Black James squared out. He was like, man, what you, what you wanna do, Stroke? What you gonna do? Cause you gonna pay me and my brother. He swings at Black James again. Black James eat the punch. He, boom, boom. He hit him two times. The door is rigged. It shouldn't swing open. His back hit the door. When his back hit the door, Black Jane rushed him up against the door, and his head hit the door. He almost falls, and I'm looking like, should I do something? Should I jump in this? Because <laughs> it, it, it could start a situation with the crib, but it's a one-on-one. -on -one. He already done jumped. Black Jane and I already took Black Jane pops the door and opens the door and hits his favorite line. Man, come on up out the sale, man. Come on up out the sale. He getting up in court. Everybody look over in the direction. This man gets up. Oh, I got some for you. I got some. Hey, cuz. Hey, cuz. He come out of the sale and get to hopping. Of course, his homeboys and stuff run up here. Black Jane takes his shirt off. I step out on the rock with him. He said, man, look. Dude talking about he finna take something from my little brother. He ain't finna take it. I said, oh, no, no, don't try to act like this is what I'm thinking. Don't try to act like we on T. Talking about he finna take something from my little brother. He gonna pay both of us today. Oh, y'all already know what time it is. We'll see all y'all could. And at that point, the G's and stuff come. I said, ah, oh, this man done got me in a situation. So the G's come over, of course, the Crips hollering at him. G. Edgar Hoover come over here. I'm, I'm cool now because G. Edgar Hoover here. I'm, I, I ain't even gonna lie to you. I know, I know one thing for sure, two things for sure. My guy Snake, but listen, when he started talking, the situation is gonna disappear. So he come in and say, Black James, tell him straight up. He was like, I ain't even gonna lie. I was doing a little hardship with the little brother. You know what I'm saying? He told me, oh, the $15 he was gonna pay me for. I told him to go up here and just see what your T was gonna say. He up here trying to really uh, go in on the little brother. So I told him, you know what I'm saying? Pretty much. Now you pick on somebody and he called us some sucker. He got serious after that. So I two pieces, right? So he explained it. We get the Crips in the cell. He explained the same thing to the Crips. And the Crips get what they do. Man, cuz you done been on that type of time for a long time. You already this, 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 this. They end up racking him. 
And when they racked him, smashed him off the hood. And when they smashed him off the hood, the dude started hanging with the boys. I'm gonna tell you something about humility. Penitential rules in effect. Sometimes you got people who run around here and they think they this, they think they that. It's because they ain't been checked yet. You ain't been in a situation where you embarrassed and it caused you some shame. A lot of people can't deal with embarrassment and shame. And then after that, what? when you can't deal with embarrassment and shame, you start acting out of your character. You start doing stuff that you never thought that you would even do. And in this situation, what happened was he got exposed. Only thing, only problem really was the whole time, nobody, nobody ever defended themselves and showed him that they wasn't going. It was always a bunch of talk and he always talked his way out of it before it actually it went to that extent. Whole time this man was big for nothing. It's a lot of young dudes right out here right now. You got that strap and really you only tough because you got that strap. And when you go to the penitentiary, you go to the jail, you ain't got them hands. Listen to me. It's somebody that's going to two-piece you. And then after they two-piece you, you're going to realize that you thought you was tough the whole time you was a coward. And that's what really happens when you end up in the penitentiary or, or on the street. You just ain't had something happen to you yet where you can realize, you know what, maybe I need to tone it down just a little bit. This dude's six foot whatever, almost 300 pounds. He just ain't had nobody to go ahead and let him know. Regardless of your size, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Y'all know what time it is. Go watch Tramps.